The next step is to check our design for manufacturing or DFM. Fortunately, Altium has tools to automate this and tell us if something is wrong. Now, in a design as simple as this, this shouldn't be too big of an issue. But what we can do is once they get more complicated, these tools are extremely helpful. So what you can do is you go to tools and you can run a design rule check. Now this will use the default Altium rules. And if you click on the run design rule check, we will come up with a window that looks like this with a lot of different rules that got violated, etc., etc. Now let's ignore these for a little bit because the default rules are really not what we want to manufacture for. Oftentimes your manufacturer will actually provide you with design rules that you have to use and you either start to manually add them into these tables with the different constraints, etc., etc., or you can find them sometimes online. In our case, let's try to use the rules from Sunstone because they provide uh, rules for Altium. So we go to Google and we type in DFM rules Sunstone. And what we can see is that there are several different links that I obviously have clicked on before. And if you click on Sunstone DFM Altium add-on, you can see that in their download section, if we scroll down, they have DFM rules for Altium. Let's download them. No thanks, we don't want to register and just download them. And once we open them up, we can see that it's a zip file with different files in it. The most important ones, these two rule files. So let's uncompress them. And in Altium, we can now actually import these rules. So if you go to Tools, Design, Rules, on the left-hand side, you right-click, you can import rules, control A to select everything. And it now gives us an option of where we want to get these rules from. So we get them from our downloads folder. Hmm. I thought I exported them in there. Oh, I just copied it. Oops. So let's extract all the files to here. And there we go. There are two different rules. One of them is a DS final and MLB final. DS is for dual sided and MLB is for multi-layer. So Sunstone has different rules because they have different accuracies that they want for uh, double sided and multi-layer boards. So in this case, this is a, a double sided board. So let's load their double sided rules. Yes, we want to really uh, remove everything else and let's hit OK. Again, we go back to tools, design rule check and Let's run one. All right, what we can see is still actually even more violations than we had before. Some of them are important, other ones are not. So let's look at the first one, silk to board region clearance violation. We can click on it and if you actually look on our board, it, let's move this uh, down here. It will tell us that we violated a rule where the silk is too, cle uh, too close um, to the board itself. And if you look down here, it says silk to board region clearance out of silk screen region text header 10. I think this is a rule that we can just ignore. It doesn't seem to be drastic. I'm not entirely sure why this actually happens. Um, let's look at the next region. Now, this is more important. What we can see here is that it wants at least 10 mils between a silk screen and this silk screen. So if we have to move this either over or we move this into a different place. So if we grab it, we can see maybe there's more space up here. I don't think so. If we move it here, we actually collide with this one here. So let's change our grid and hope that at least this is now with control M, we can actually measure different things or we can go to tools. Um, no, actually it's report, measure distance. We can see if I measure from here. Well, if you measure to here, that's 10 mils. So we will be under the 10 mils. Um, this will be too close. 
So let's see how much we have over here. Report measure. So this is 10 mils, so we have a little bit over there. There is potentially a way of actually squeezing this in here, but I think the easier way of doing this is just taking all these, oops, all these pads. Let's take these lines in between. Let's just move them. A little bit over. Fixing up the line up here. You can also just delete it and redo it. Oftentimes, the easiest way of fixing it. And this should actually take care of many, many, many of these um, violations. So, like, to figure out what happened, let's run this again. Oops. Design rule. Design tools, design rule check. And if you don't want that one report there, you can delete the report rule file and then the file will pop up. And now we just have a couple of other clearances and I will clean them up and then we can see where we are at. Now these are constraints that are in the footprint, so we will just ignore them. Um, if you actually look at it, the difference is that we are wrong by only 0.03 mils. So this is an error that we can really ignore, even though they can't manufacture this. But that should be fine. Um, now here, we move this one around. So let's move this back. And really, design rules are something that you have to decide by yourself. What? Do you think can they actually feasibly manufacture what is really not acceptable it's just a hint and telling you that hey there is something wrong over here and you might want to look into it to see what's actually going on so here for example we have a, a, a hole a rule that one of the holes is too close and um, to one of the pads and that's actually a reasonably easy one to fix we can just take this particular hole we can move it further out. Now we do have to actually change these tracks to reconnect there. Again, easiest way is to delete them and recreate them. And now we actually want to report this polygon here. So just double click it and execute it. And so it actually regenerates the whole polygon itself. Now we do have a hole size violation. And this is because Altium um, wants a minimum hole of 16. So let's change this. We can find all of the vias that have a hole of 15 mil. So if you double click it, it will switch to the same. Um, they are all selected again here in the PCB inspector. It will show you all the different preferences that are the same for all these selected ones. So let's change this to 60 mil. We save it again. Let's run another design rule check and see what happens. We still have these design rule and um, constraints. You can also see that there is some minimum solder mask constraints. We can't really do much about that um, because this is what the footprint wants. What we can do is we can double click it and try to change the and override the solder mask or even easier if you go actually into our uh, library um, since we created this one we can um, select all of the pads so we want pads the same we selected all the pads and instead of having um, the solder mask expansion and we want to override it and just say this is a one mil override and you can see that it just became significantly smaller you can save this and instead of having to import this into the whole um, project again you can actually right click on one of these footprints say you want to update 
um, the PCB with this particular footprint, you want to update all the different layers. And if you go back into your footprint, you can actually see that it changed the solder mask and cutouts here. So let's save this and see what happened. Now design rule check. And if we scroll down here, they're still violated, but now they're only at 0.2 mils away. So almost nothing. I think this should be fine. And um, we can ignore these and the rest of the, the violations we can ignore. Now we are ready to actually generate the manufacturing files to manufacture this whole design.